If you hit me in a dream, you better wake up and apologize. <laughs> Court is uh, staying by with an expert to learn more about the art of the apology. Yes, indeed. Now, I know that we are at the end of August, but August is uh, <laughs> National Civility Month. We've got our civility expert along with us, uh, Rosalinda Randall. She's got some Good details morning. and some tips for us this morning. Good morning to you. These glasses are fabulous. Thank you. I'm sorry, I just got, I got so distracted. They're wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Take them off. <laughs> so, Rosalind, I know that, you know, there's so many times and opportunities that we have to make amends, right? Mea culpa. Um, but it's the way that we make those apologies and, and, of course, the tone behind it that actually make the difference. So much. It can be a simple thing. People think, you know, you need to send, you know, 500 roses and write right. poetry or anything. It's just the tone, the timing, everything. And for some people, I've learned that it's it's a sign of weakness and vulnerability yeah. that the people have a hard time apologizing. Um, maybe because of their position, their rank, even within the family. Oh, well, you know, Cody, he never apologizes. You know how he is. Yeah. And we let it go. Never. <laughs> and, you know, the excuses have always been made. So it's not something that we do. It requires humility, and a lot of people hate that word. They go, I'm not a doormat, I'm not. It has nothing to do with that. It just means ownership, being responsible. Um, sometimes you're uncomfortable doing that, and you prefer to ignore it, and oh, let's just ignore it or move on. Hey, let's reset. That's not taking responsibility for and recognizing and accepting how that person felt. You do not have to agree that they should feel hurt or offended or whatever. Right. That's not your call. That's how they feel. Um, also taking time to assess and clarify. Sometimes rushing it and just going, hey, sorry, or you know, dropping right. by the office and going, hey, hey, sorry about that, and moving on. That is not genuine. That's going to make it worse. So yes. taking a little bit of time and, and not deciding like, oh, they shouldn't feel that way. Instead, they should, be, you know, why do they feel that way? Try and understand it. Could I have said it differently? Was I in a bad mood? Again, I, I, I take some responsibility. Take some responsibility um, yeah. Asking for a, an opportunity to rephrase it. Maybe it just didn't come out right. Um, and run it by a trusted person. And I don't mean social media. Just the situation. <laughs> yeah. That can help. And that goes to how we apologize. Is, is you know The way that you go about the apology can make the difference to the person that is receiving the apology. Most definitely use their reaction as a guide to how you can apologize. Yeah. Is it going to take more? Were they really upset? Um, the, the delivery method, texting, email, maybe those are appropriate. Again, it depends on the relationship and how bad they were. Do not. If I have to say one thing and close this, do not include excuses mm. when you apologize. Oh, that's good. That, that's it. That's I was good. in a bad mood. Don't give opinions. Well, you shouldn't feel that way. You're too sensitive. You need to move on. All of those things, not your call. Not your call. And again, timing, if it's not a good time, ask for the opportunity another time. Yeah. And then the, the, the last one you have is expectations and letdowns. Now, is that for, for both sides, the apologizer and the apologizee? Yeah, because if I come in and go, hey, hey, I guess you think I need to apologize. So sorry. Yeah, that's for me. That's not going to do it. And for that person, was it genuine? So sometimes we have expectations that people should get over it. That's the, the, the perpetrator, so to speak. Yeah. Um, that's not your call. And also, is this the first time you have done this or the ninth time mm. you have done this? Ooh, that's, um, a good one. Th that's another thing to consider. Yeah. You know, will it ever be enough? Uh, I don't know. And I am not a believer in forgive and forget. I, I don't know what that means to me. Forgiving is really for we no longer have a grudge. That is a good place to be. I wish yeah. you well, but you're not going to be a part of my life. It doesn't mean that now everything's hunky dory. We're going to hold hands and you know have drinks later yeah. on. That yeah. that yeah. is not necessary. And sometimes the relationship ends or adjusts permanently or temporarily. That's another thing that's difficult to accept yeah. when maybe we did a heartfelt apology and we think they should forgive us. There's no shoulds in this situation. Very interesting stuff. Well, she is the author of Don't Burp in the Boardroom. She's our civility expert, Rosalinda Brandel. Always a pleasure to chat with you. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to be here. All right, and we're going to link all of her details on our website, GoodDaySacramento.com, under show info and today's date. Cody? We apologize for all the things that John did. <laughs> I was listening to that. I was thinking everything she's talking about. 
The inability to do that yeah. is the cornerstone of the entire Real Housewives <laughs> universe. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I feel like we need to get you with the Housewives, the yeah. entire, all, all of the cities, <laughs> and just have some therapy. There would be no shows if people apologized. <laughs> exactly. <on that>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs>